Hi, and welcome back for another episode of FPL Journey to 10K, the podcast and series in which we delve into the mind of one of the greatest players to ever play the game, my co-host, Mr. Matt Corbidge, on the hope that his guidance and his wisdom will get us into that elusive 10K. As somebody that's finished in the top 10K six times in the eight season he's played the game, never finishing outside the top 25K, he is the person that can do it if anybody can. But unfortunately, he isn't with me this week. He is sunning it up in Dubai. We can let him off with that. It's a good reason not to be here. Um, could have took his laptop with him, but never mind. We'll let him off. Um, I wouldn't be taking mine with me either. So Matt will be back with us next week. Uh, so today it is just myself. So a bit of a short pod today, just looking at how we got on in game week 27 but then also my thoughts ahead of game week 28. But as I say, Matt will be back ahead of game week 29, the blank game week 29, the very depleted four games only game week 29 uh, to discuss his plans and his thoughts ahead of that one. But looking at game week 27, uh, good week for us both. Both hit a green arrow. Matt with a 88 so 394k overall for the game week. So uh, a, a really decent rise in terms of green arrow for him. Gone from 326k to 247k. Um, just for those that can't see it, if you're on, on Spotify, he had Keller Hingol, who got a clean sheet and three bonus points to get nine. Double Arsenal offensive Saliba Gabriel with six each. And then Bradley pulling in a clean sheet and two bonus points as well. So a double Liverpool defence, double Arsenal defence, uh, four clean sheets for him there. Across the midfield, De Bruyne continued to frustrate with two, uh, but then the rest of his midfield did deliver. So Saka, two assists, unfortunately for him. Well, I'll say unfortunately for him, probably a good thing for Matt, as weird as it sounds. He got seven points, got subbed off at half time, but because of the amount of people like Captain Saka, his effective ownership was actually over 100%. So any point he gained would have dropped Matt in the ranks, interestingly. So there you go. So it's probably not a bad score. Uh, in, it could have been a lot worse. Uh, Gordon with eight points. Foden with 15, thanks to his brace and three bonus. And then up front, Slanko with two. Watkins with 13. And then the other person that had over 100 effective ownership, but that was playing him with the captaincy. So two... 100% ownership, in effect, um, with one goal, six points, so doubled to 12. So 88 overall, solid week. Won't go into it too much because I don't know what Matt wants to say. The Areola benching, like a lot of managers this week, I think I think was a sensible choice. Who would have seen him having an absolute blinder, getting man of the match and saving a penalty? Just one of those game weeks. Calher was a, was a sound option and improved with his nine points. And then Taylor on the bench with... One point, a Stupinan, again, with a zero. Keeps getting zeros. Uh, and then Richarlison, he has left in his team the injury to Richarlison. Um, so, yeah, we'll uh, discuss with Matt what he plans to do ahead of game week 29. Having a very quick look at it. He's going to struggle. He's got, what, one, two, three, four players, I believe. Uh, that will play in the game week, but he has rolled as transfer, as you'll see, didn't make a transfer last game week. So he has rolled that and therefore um, will have three transfers to go out before 29 or four, four actually. So he could, could get himself to a nice eight. Uh, maybe that's what he's thinking, but we'll we'll discuss that with him next week. Uh, for myself, so I did make a transfer. My transfer was Richarlison out, saw the injury. I wanted a piece of... Tottenham, so traded him for Son, who did get a goal, so seven points for him, but overall, 81 points, 1.2 million overall in the game week, and a green arrow from 88k up to 80k, so continue my green arrow trend, happy with that, and again, for those that can't see it, I had Dubravka in there, clean sheet, and save points, so took him to seven, double Arsenal defence as well, Gabriel and Saliba both getting six, and my other was Kyle Walker, and thanks to uh, the Rocket from uh, Rashford, no plain sheet for him, just the two points. Uh, I've already mentioned Song got his goal, Foda with three, uh, two goals and three bonus points, so 15 for him, and then Saka again because of his effective ownership. Didn't really want to see him score, but seven points could have been a lot worse. Um, very frustrated with Gross, benching, 
probably been Brighton's best player. He's done me well over the last few weeks. Part of the reason uh, you know, the rise in rank that I've had recently, I think, is because of his differential points that have that have been taken on. But he got benched, so that was a shame. Uh, the Richarlison to Sun transfer did work out for me because otherwise I'd have been playing Alex Moreno. So I'd have been six points worse off there. Um, and then up front, I had Watkins with a 13. Haaland, captain, so he doubled to 12. And then I kept Darwin Nunes. I know a lot of people moved him on early doors to get on Solanke ahead of game week 28. Um, but I decided I'd keep Darwin. I thought he could. He, he looked to be back. He was He was... Looking likely midweek, he was going to be fit. Even though I did see before the deadline he was going to be benched, I just felt, you know, my other options were Moreno and Taylor. And I thought Villa will probably concede. Luton aren't bad at home, generally get a goal. Burnley aren't exactly the best team in the league. There's a reason that they're, they're the 19th. Um, and Bournemouth aren't a bad team as, as well. So I kind of felt both of those teams were, were going to concede. So it just, I thought I'd take the gamble. He comes on. Second half gets a goal, and and it and it's that's how it worked out. Unlucky not to get a bonus point, one one off that, but um, take my five, which is the difference between a red arrow and a green arrow for me. So, so yeah, not a bad game week, similar to last week, small green, but hey, on any green, I will take. And the same on my benches as well as Matt's one point Moreno, one point Taylor. Uh, I've, I've got. Huang, who's injured, unfortunately, looks like he's going to be out for a little while. Um, so something that I need to need to deal with there. And then Ariola was I was never going to start Ariola. I thought Everton are going to score, and it proved they did. I thought Newcastle have more chance to keep an, a clean sheet at home uh, rather than West Ham away. And again, they did, but Ariola scored, saved the penalty, which it's not going to happen every week. It is just what it is. Um, so yeah, not bad for us both. Green arrows. So. What I'm kind of now looking at is ahead of game week 28. Now, I think ahead of game week 28, there is a real opportunity to potentially wildcard. Um, so, as I say, Matt's, Matt's got four. Again, I'll just clarify that. One, two, three, four. Yeah, with the keeper. Um, so, Matt's got four. Two transfers this week, one next. We might, might get to seven players without taking a hit. I'm not in as good of a space. So for me, I had a game week 20. I was looking at game week 29. This is, sorry, the blank game week. Um, I can get to seven with, with hits, uh, without hits. I can play Areola. Great. I can play Moreno and Taylor. So that takes me to three across the midfield. I've only got Son. So that is four. And up front, I've got Watkins. So I've got five with two transfer so I can get to seven as well. Um but that doesn't it that if if I do it, the difference here is I can't get Solanke in. Or if I do get Solanke in, I'm down to six for the blank game week. So I'm not in as nice of a position as Matt. Um because I feel like Solanke is a must. So I really think there's an opportunity to play the wild card now, game week twenty eight. Deal with game week twenty nine with the wild card and keep the free hit for game week twenty nine. Don't spend it then and spend it in game week probably thirty four, thirty seven, whatever, whatever. I choose to 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 work on with the fixtures. Um, the alternative is to play the free hit. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna have six players right. I feel without taking hits, I feel like I'm gonna have to play the free hit in twenty nine if I don't wild card in twenty eight. Um, so the, yeah, the next the next bit is just putting a few slides together on what my team would look like if I did wildcard in 28 compared to what it would look like if I didn't wildcard in 28 and just making some comparisons. So this is this is my thought over the next three days, four days. You now we're on Tuesday, whenever the next deadline is, I need to make this decision. What am I doing? Sorry about that, just drink the tea before it goes cold. Um, so yeah, this this will be for game week twenty eight. So if I start with the the one on the right, which is if I don't wild card, um, I will have made a transfer, which is Darwin Nunes out, bringing in Solanke for the double at home to Luton, at home to Sheffield United, and giving him the armband straight away. The rest of the team, I've got a double Arsenal defence, which which I like at home to Brentford. Uh, I like don't mind Ariola in goal at home to Burnley, although I'm not 
overly confident on the West Ham defence. That's not a bad fixture at all. Uh, Moreno are home to Tottenham. Tottenham can score there quite happily, um, quite easily. So I'm not, I'm not again, I'm sold on, on that. Uh, and then I've got Saka, Son, Foden away at Liverpool. Again, not a great fixture, but Foden, Foden can, can get attack and returns really in, in any game. And then Gross hopefully will come back in. He's at home to Forest. Um, Watkins and Haaland up front. So that would be the 11. On the left is my wildcard team. Now, don't take this as gospel if you are looking at the – watching this on YouTube and you can see the picture there. It, I've put I've put in a rough guide of players. I'm not going to stick to this per se. Um, I just put in a, some players that I think can work over the next three, four game weeks, but there's others that I, I might look at instead. Um, but yeah, just for the sake of, of this exercise, put in a team – what I like about the wildcard, I prefer the wildcard team this game week, primarily because I get more double game weekers. Now, I do lose the Arsenal double defence. And the, I could I could have kept Saliba instead of, instead of Gusto. The reason I didn't is because of the games from game week 30, where I feel like they change into Chelsea's favour. I don't mind... Newcastle, I don't, I don't love it. <laughs> they both blank next game week, but it was with the future fixtures in mind as opposed to this game week. So I do prefer the double Arsenal on the non wild card route. I'm also going to lose Gross, but I'm replacing Gross essentially with Bowen, who's got a home to Burnley. Great fixture for him, playing up front, playing closer to goal. I'm losing Foden, as I say, but I'm replacing him with Ross Barkley. Who again, not nowhere near the standard of, of Foden, but Barkley's got two fixtures, seems to be the player. If anybody's going to do anything for Luton, he seems to be the one that's that that has been the creative outlet if you look at the underlying stats. Um, and what I also like about it is I get rid of Huang, so my injured player's gone, and I also get him bowing early before the fixture swing. Well, before the, the next game week when when people are going to be jumping all over him. Um, get the nice fixture against Burnley ahead of Game week 29 when he plays Villa. Um, I think that all made sense to everybody, but the team would end up being Neto in goal, double game week player at home to Luton and Sheffield United. I'd then have a defence, so I'd keep Gabriel, but I'd then, instead of Saliba and Marino, I'd have Gusto and Doughty. Doughty I'd played twice away at Palace and Bournemouth. Gusto's at home to Newcastle. Gusto might change. As I say, this is just a generic thought. Gusto could easily change. Across the midfield, I'd keep Saka, I'd keep Son, but I'd replace Gross and Foden um, with Bowen, who's got a really nice fixture at home to Burnley, and Ross Barkley, who is away at Palace and Bournemouth. And then the up front is exactly the same. Halland, Watkins, Solanke, captain. Fantastic bench options. And then bringing in Madison, mainly to target the game week 29 blank where he will have a game and game week 30 where he's at home to Luton could see him getting some some points there and Udogi for the exact same reasons and then Taylor is also on the bench for both keeper wise I could change I've got Flecken on my bench mainly for the blank game week um I might have to stick with it I did the other the other pairing I thought about was Kaminsky getting the Luton goalkeeper in because he plays in 30. So getting him instead of Neto, I could then get a Bournemouth defender in potentially. I'd have to look at it. But Kaminsky and then pairing him with Raya. So then I keep the double Arsenal defence. Uh, not for this game week, but for, for future game weeks. So I'd, it'd leave me that option. So that's the other goalkeeper pairing I, I, I did think about. Um, you'll see underneath the players, you've got expected points. So... Working out the expect from the expected data, my wildcard team here would beat my non-wildcard team by 8.4 points. Now, again, I think a lot of that is because I've been playing double game week players. Um, but I like the team. I, I think I prefer the team on the left, so the wildcard team here, compared to the non-wildcard team. We then move into game week 29. Now... Going with the one on the left, so this would be if I've wildcarded, I would make a transfer, probably looking at Solanke out, Tony in. Probably be something I'd look to do. Um, 
what I like about that is, well, Sanke blanks in the game week. Tony doesn't. He's got Burnley away, so it gives me an extra player. And I'd end up getting 10 players out. But the 10 players I've got are all the big hitters. I'd have Son, I'd have Bowen, I'd have Tony, I'd have Watkins. Um, so the, the players that can drive home the points that game week have pretty much got all bases covered. The only person that I don't have who might do some damage is Morris. Uh, maybe Kudus, you could argue, I suppose. Um, but yeah, the, the vast majority of the big hitters I've got. So I'd get 10 players out, no hits. Fairly happy with that. Um, if a wild card, sorry, that's if a wild card. If I don't wild card, I'll be playing a free hit. So I'm getting 11 plays out, no hits as well. Uh, the main difference between the two teams, so instead of Flecken, who's away at Burnley, I'd have Ariola, who's a home to Villa. I don't think that's, it's it's neither here nor there. Uh, Doherty and Odogi playing both. Um, but if I did free hits, I'd probably go with somebody like Reguillon. Um who's away at Burnley in defence, rather than T Charlie Taylor at home to Brentford. I feel like Reguillon's maybe got a bit more of an attack and threat. He's also playing for the better defence, so it might be a slight up there. Uh, although the expected data seems to suggest Charlie Taylor's going to get more points. Um, across the midfield, yeah, pretty much pretty much the same. Son, Madison, Bowen in the mall. Uh, on the non-free hit one, I've got Ross Barkley, as well, a home to Forest, whereas on the free hit played one, I've got Alanga, who's away at Luton. Uh, and then up front, Tony Watkins on both, but I've got Morris on the free hit, and I don't have a player at all. I've got a blank sacker on the pitch for the, the, the wild card team. Uh, again, looking at the expected data, my wild, if I wild carded, I'd this game week expect to actually be down by 4.6, so the free hit team eats my wildcard team by 4.6 points looking at the expected data. But as I say, the only the only real player I'm missing out on is is Morris, who well looking looking straight at, at his fixtures after that, Tottenham away, Arsenal away. I don't want him for that. Um I think Barkley's enough to cover potentially. Uh the other route is uh, whether I have the guts to do this or not, is I could get Morris in instead of Haaland. Um, again, in game week 28. So, get a double game week out of him. Haaland's playing Liverpool away. Terrible fixture. Morris could come in for him, play Palace and Bournemouth away, and also play in game week um, 29 for me. And then, as long as I've got the money in the bank to then bring Haaland back, that's not a bad move. So, I'm getting three fixtures instead of one out of Morris. Uh, compared to Haaland. So that's another route. Um, the only thing that puts me off there, number one, Haaland's Haaland. If he goes and scores two, three goals against Liverpool, who do give up chances, it's not going to surprise anybody, is it? Let's be honest. Um, Morris could blank very easily in three games. And that, well, again, wouldn't surprise anybody. It's also the money. I've, I can sell Haaland for 14.2, but I'd have to buy him back for 14.5. But yeah, there's, there's something there as well. Um, so yeah, on this one, I obviously I prefer a free hit team because it's a free hit. So I can pick the best of the bunch. But as my point is, it's not that different. So again, it doesn't put me off playing the wild card. Going into game week 30. Now, this is where it does differ slightly. Um, game week 30, I'm playing with Madison and I'm playing with Tony. And really, they're, they're the main... They're the main differences. So I, I don't have Foden. I don't have Solanke. Everything else I can kind of live with. You know, you've got you've got Neto against Dubravka, Neto at home to Everton, Dubravka at home to West Ham. You know, and here on there for me. Across their defence, uh, I'm playing Gabriel on both. I'm away at City, not expecting a lot. Even if I had Saliba, I'd be benching an Arsenal defender. So I'm absolutely fine with that. On the non wildcard route, I'm playing Charlie Taylor away at Chelsea. Doesn't feel great. Where and then I'm playing um, Marino at home to Wolves. Wolves can score. I don't trust the the, the Villa defence again. Not a massive fan of it. Whereas if I if I did do the wildcard in game week thirty, I'd have Udogi at home to Luton, and I'd have Gusto potentially at home to Burnley, which I think I yeah I, well I very much prefer. 
um, and the stats I'd say that in terms of the predicted points I'd say that as well. Across the midfield, Sons on both, Sack is there for both. I'd then have Madison and Bowen against Foden and Palmer. Madison's at home to Luton, lovely fixture. Um, Bowen is away at Newcastle, not so nice. Then he plays Tottenham, then he plays Wolves, again, not great. Um, so I'd toy in this game week potentially of for selling Bowen and bringing in Palmer anyway. So that that would match them up. And then it's rarely Madison against Foden. So Madison at home to Luton, Foden at home to Arsenal. Again, I, I'm quite happy with with that that, that compete. Um, and then up front, Halland both Watkins on both. So it's Tony versus um, Solanke. Solanke is at home to Everton. Tony is at home to United. The, the stats lean towards Tony. I'd probably lean towards Solanke, to be honest. I think United can be difficult away from home to 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 break down. Um, whereas you know, Everton can be as well, don't get me wrong. But um, I feel like United do it more frequently against teams lower down in the table. Uh, so, yeah, I can, again, I mean, looking at the stats in terms of the expected points, my wildcard team is... Two point two points ahead of the non wildcard team. Um, that's without getting the extra point four from from Bowen to, to to Palmer, and I prefer the team on the left in this game week. So that is so so yeah, I'm leaning towards the wild card. So for the, for that reason, this is where it kind of changes. So I've flipped into game week thirty one. What a really don't like about wildcarding in game week 28 and where it leaves me in this game week. Um, so firstly, I want to have the wildcard to utilize, obviously, because I'll, I'll have used it in 28. The team here, so having that that double Arsenal defence in this game week when they're at home to Luton looks looks great. Um if I've wildcarded, I'm probably down to one Arsenal defender. Unless, as I say, I do that keeper thing uh, where, I, where I'd, I'd have Raya in net and then and then that kind of covers covers me there um, rather than, than having Neto. Um, otherwise, I've got Udogi away at West Ham and the Tottenham defence is poor, so I'd, I'd expect him to concede. I've got Gusto at home to Man United. Again, not a great fixture. Um Again, even even if on the non wild card route, it's Charlie Taylor, a, a home to Wolves, and I'd, I'd expect him to concede. But I need to. And this is where we need to do some work if I'm going to wild card. The defence that comes out into game week 31 isn't fantastic, nor is it in my non wild card team. So in my defence is going to take some some work really. Um, across the midfield, I've got rid of Son on both, and I bought in Salah. But I'm taking a hit, I believe. Yeah, I'm taking a hit from the looks of it to be able to afford Salah on both. Uh, if I wildcarded and I haven't sold Bowen for Palmer, I'd be selling Bowen for Makati just to get a cheap midfielder, get myself down to seven attackers who will play every week and stop save myself the headache. Uh, on the non wildcard route, I'd be doing Foden to McAtee for the, for the same reason, but it'd free up the funds uh, for Salah as well for that run that he's got a home to Sheffield United, away at Man United, a home to Palace. I think everybody's going to want a uh, one Salah for that. He's, he's capped the material across across the entire time. Um, but yeah, the, I won't have the wild card. I probably in game week 31 prefer the non wildcard team. So for for a couple of reasons. Number one, double Arsenal defence at home to Luton. Fantastic. Really like that. Across the midfield, as I say, I might have Palmer anyway. Um, but it's gross away at Brentford against Barkley, who's away at Arsenal. I clearly prefer gross in that situation. And then I've got Palmer against Madison. And based on recent form, Pentaker, all of that, I very much prefer Palmer. And then up front, Solanke against Tony. Solanke is a home to Palace. Tony is a home to Bright at Brighton. I probably prefer Solanke. Um, the stats. So I've been looking at the expected points data. The non wildcard route team in game week 31 would expect to be 1.1 point better off. So overall, 
if a wild card in game week 28, again, according to the expected data and the expected data only, I will be 4.9 points better off, but I won't have a wild card anymore, but I will have a free hit. So yeah, that's where my heads are. That was only the expected data points that I've been that I've been I've been rooting. But if I literally just look through it, so back to game week twenty eight, I prefer my team on the left. I prefer the wild card team. I get four lots of double game week players, and I've got players in there like Bowen who's got Burnley at home. I've got a better keeper option, and again I can play around with some of the players in there. But I'd very much prefer that as a team, the wild card team. When it comes to game week twenty nine, blank game week twenty nine. The 10 players on the left, yeah, I prefer the 11 on the on the right, the, the free hit team, of course I would. But the only real threat is Morris, which, again, if I've got the nerve, I could have anyway, because I could get him in on the wild card instead of Haaland and just ignore Haaland for the Liverpool, the blank, and then even potentially the Arsenal game. He's playing the two toughest teams in the league, apart from City, and blanking. So if you're going to go against them at any point, this could be it. So I could have Morris anyway. And then I don't have that headache either. So the t- you know, it, it, it's mix and match. Game week 30, I prefer the team on the left as well. Again, I think the defence is in better shape with that Udogi and Gusto home games to Burnley and Luton. Um, I could get Palmer in for Bowen. Which you know, but Palmer's got Burnley at home, so that could be a transfer that I make there very easily. And I've got Madison instead of Foden. Foden's got Arsenal. Madison's got Luton at home, so I'm expecting probably Madison to to do pretty well there. So again, I prefer the team, the wild card team there on the left, and then game week 31, as I say, is where it kind of starts to unravel, and I probably prefer the non wild card team. Um, for the sake of this, that's kind of where I've ended it. What I'll have to do is look at game week, where it leaves me in like game week 32, potentially even 33. Um, but I think there's a real argument here for playing the free at the wild card now. Now, I did see Salah is meant to be back in training this week. And so that's the thing that's holding me back. I'm going to be in a position where I need to get funding to bring Salah in, probably ahead of game week 30, potentially. Um, so, yeah, I'd have, to, I'd have to look into that as well. You know, the wild card's an easy way to get Salah, right? So if I use it now when he's potentially injured, I'm not going to get him in. So I've got to I've got to take that into account as well. But hopefully, appreciate a lot of that was babble, but hopefully it kind of shows where my head's at, why I'm thinking about wild card in this game week. And it makes sense. Now, unfortunately, Matt isn't here to run this by. So I need you lot to be my Matt. Please leave me comments on whether you think I'm being stupid here, if it makes sense. If you think, you know, as I say, that game week 28 uh, on the on the left now for you, that those of you that can see it. I'm not stuck to that team. So if you think, well, actually get rid of Gusto, a better person for you than Gusto that's got a, a nice 30 as well, could be this player or a, a better keep keeper swap or whatever, whatever it may be. Put it in the comments. YouTube on Spotify, let me know because I'm going to be playing around with this for the next three days. Um, driving my wife insane, I just sat on my phone transferring players in and out. So give me help. Um, and then Mac can laugh at me next game week and go, What on earth did you play your wild card for? Uh, but moving on, moving on because I could go on about that non stop. Captain picks. I spend a lot of time on this because uh, there is one absolute standout, and that is unsurprisingly Solanke. You'll see pretty much every player on this screen is from a double game week team, and again, that isn't surprising. From your Luton, from your Bournemouth, the player that's getting the most points, the most goals, it's Solanke. He's got two home games um, coming up, as I've showed. Uh, here he's got Luton at home, Sheffield United at home. So he's got a team in 18th and a team in 20th. Don't even think about it. Just give him the armband and move on with the game week. If you do want to consider somebody else, again, based on those fixtures, you might want to go an outside pick like Clivert. You might want to go a Tavernier. But as I say, Bournemouth have 18th place and 20th place, both in the same game week, both at home. So don't overthink it. Uh, just just 
just go. Go with the, with the obvious. Get Solanke in, captain him, or get a Cliver, get a Tavernier. Um, if you if you really want to go a little a little bit bold with it, uh, but yeah, there's no point in saying much more about it if I'm honest, because it is a fairly obvious pick this game week. Um, so on to my thoughts ahead of game week 28, and again, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because you've heard it for the last 20 minutes about where my head's at. So I've got one free. One free uh, transfer, 0.6 million pounds in the bank. If I'm going to not play my wild card, and I'm going to commit to my free hit in 29, um, then the this is a simple transfer for me. I've got to bring in Solanke, and that will be for Darwin Nunes, who has a Man City at home, followed by a blank. Um, I just want to do that because, maybe partly because I'm a Liverpool fan, um, and why, I just... If, if I had to bet now who's going to score in that game, Liverpool, Man City, is it Darwin Nunes or Haaland? I'd bet on Haaland. As a result, I'd leave him in the team and I'd take Darwin Nunes out. I've got to keep Watkins because he plays in, he, he plays, he's got some nice fixtures after 29. So I want to keep him in. As, as, I've got so much value in him. Uh, I don't have any in Darwin. So I think that would be the obvious move. But again, that could be pointless because I might wildcard. Meaning I can keep the free hit until later in the season, don't have to play it next game week. Um, and then use the free hit in a, in a double game week like 34 or 37, use the bench boost in the other one, um, or use my wild card alongside a bench boost in the other one as well, and get myself into a position where I can manage to get 15 playing twice. But we don't know until we, we see those fixtures. Um, but if I don't use the wild card this week, I'll 100% be free hitting in 29. And then wild card, I'm probably between 30 and 33. So, yeah, that's my chip strategy thoughts. Um, and that's it. That comes to an end. Uh, as I say, Matt will be back with us next game week and we'll give you his views and. I might, have to, I might have to message him whilst he's in Dubai and be like, Matt, I'm going to play my wild card. Talk me out of it. Um, but hopefully, as I say, hopefully be talking you through where my head's at and why I'm thinking what I'm thinking. Kind of kind of brings home why it makes it does make sense and it's a, it's not a bad move at all. Hopefully that, you know, you, you see it as well. But as I say, leave me in the comments and let me know. Um, but otherwise, I will be back next week and I'll be back with Matt. Thank you for joining me this game week. Uh, whatever you decide to do, whether you're wildcarding or not, all the best with it. Um, hopefully, green arrows will be on your side. And we'll uh, yeah, see you back with Matt next game week. All the best until then. <laughs>